Hey Savannah, let's say yes. We were talking about it the other day, and it sounds helpful. Yes, it has been helpful. It makes me. What is helpful? Gabba, oh. I've missed the last week's shows because we were on vacay. Ooh, congratulations it's a on good the vacay. Reason to miss a show. But I caught up yesterday. And I loved all of them in the new format. Awesome, that's good. Thank you. Hope you had a nice vacation. Love this question, although that's a lot. What? Let's see, how do I communicate for better connection? Ooh, we got a lot of episodes that's about that. That's a wait. Word up, Paul, on Facebook. What? Yo, yo. Good morning. Tuned in and driving. <laughs> well, I hope listening. either she's driving and you're holding the phone or opposite Paul, I'm of that. so excited for your podcast. It's going to be the best. It's going to be rad, too. <clears throat> I'm such a podcast nerd, too. Man, I seriously. And we should out. go. So the AOM event, the AOM Seattle meetup is scheduled for July 25th. That's a Thursday. And one of your guys' free days uh, was the 24th and 25th, I believe. So we should go do dinner on a... Celebrate my birthday. Maybe on the Wednesday, the 24th, Paul. Let's Paul. see, where do you find GABA? You can find it in the natural food store, natural food Fred section. Fred Meyer has it. I was talking check. and you interrupted me. Holy. Check, check. Natural food section or super supplements, places check. like that. Check your levels, please. <clears throat> Real quick. Check, check. Yep, I can't hear myself. Oh, check, so check. Not, hold on. <clears throat> oh, you're not plugged in. <laughs> oh, yeah, you need that. Sorry, there's this is here. There. That. Wait a minute. Let's see. That's how I found AOM was another podcast, the Bad Christian Podcast. Yep. We used to live with Matt Carter. So that's his best friend. Uh, he's my boss. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about living with Matt Carter. We in used a home to. where you have. We had our son. We lived with Matt and his girlfriend, is, so. who's his hello, wife now. Hello. Okay, that's good. But just think about check, that. Check, check. It was insanity. Hello. He took out all the grass from our backyard. What's up? And put Amy. in gravel. And we had Amy. three dogs, and they would crap all over our gravel backyard. It's insanity. We've had a really fun life. She's lit today, y'all. What? <laughs> I can't say four things about my life. You can. Four things. Yesterday, we had the most amazing conversation, so podcast people won't hear this. Maybe I should save it for the podcast. Yeah, probably should. So, never mind. Smalley Marriage Radio. Yes, the Smalleys. Hey, what's Smalley's up, guys? Real. Let's see. That reminds me of an amazing oh, I thought you said Brothers lyric. Smalley was on. No, I said I found you through Smalley Marriage Radio. Smalley's, cool. Smalley's are rad. Okay, let's go. Do it. We are friends with Michael Smalley. That's right. Um, let's see. 33. Okay. Okay. I think we're ready. I've been ready. Cool. <laughs> Way to keep the mood light. Got okay. it. Let's go. <clears throat> I, I need you to hold that really still when we intro. For some reason, it. I'll hold it so still. <laughs> What's so funny about that? <laughs> I love it when you do jokes like that. That really got me. Now I can't intro the show. I am the best. I'll hold it so still. You're in Seattle. Love it. My sister's up there. Ooh, cool. Ooh. We're doing a, a, a meetup. Not mm -hmm. not a not a formal formal AOM con like we did in Chicago, but we're planning a meetup July. I'm 25th. planning an Enneagram event, and we'll talk to y'all about it. We will. I'm okay, let's go. It. Okay. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to the Anatomy of Marriage podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and we got the giggles, which is hilarious. Today is day 33. I don't speak my partner's love language. How can I learn about communication? And my husband is an alcoholic. If you're new here, welcome. We have over 200 shows covering all sorts of marriage topics because we had a really terrible marriage. Seth is a licensed marriage and family therapist, so we know some stuff. Um, today's episode is brought to you by Audible. Please get your free audiobook by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. Uh, do that. You will not be sorry that you did that. That's right. And I got on to the listeners because we only had five impressions, but there was actually like 400. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks <laughs> listeners. Go, go do that. Get your free audiobook. It helps us out and it helps you out too and introduces you to the wonderful world of audio. We love audio books. Uh, okay. And thank you to Audible for doing that. 
That's right. That's like one of my dreams was having Audible be a thing for us. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Before we dive into your questions, we're gonna answer. Or we're gonna read a review of the day. This is from Jody. It's from a while ago, honestly, but it says, "I love this honest, tongue-in-cheek encouragement for marriages. They interview interesting guests, but I appreciate their honesty. It has given me a lot to think about and to talk about with my own husband. Thank you." And that was five stars. You're very welcome. We try to start conversations and have conversations and not be afraid to talk about anything. That's right. Sex, communication, bodies. Everything we talk about it. So, um, yes, thank you for your review. If you haven't reviewed the show yet, please do it. Um, and, yeah, let's dive right. into the questions. Okay, questions. I am not a physical touch kind of person at all. Some days I completely forget to kiss my husband. When I do finally kiss him, usually goodnight, he almost always says, Oh, thanks for pretending like you love me. I've heard that before. It makes me feel bad because I do love him. He just get he just needs it shown, and the very last way that I show love is touching. My needs are his what? My needs are his very last ways of showing love as well. I feel so bad that I can easily go a full day without kissing him while still knowing that he needs affection from me. Those are my notes. Every time there's little spots, don't read that. I will not read that. Um, this is a great question and it is based, it's all around love languages, right? And someone brought this up in the women's group mm -hmm. of our Facebook page and they were talking about the, the golden rule, like treat others how you would like to be treated. And mm -hmm. she was like, that's so damaging for mm -hmm. marriages. Oh, and I was right. like, that's so, like such an insightful thing that she was talking about. Because mm -hmm. she was like, yeah, if I, <clears throat> if I treat you, you know, my, mine is acts of service. Right. Which if I just acts of service you to death. You will never feel love because your love language it's is like mine. scones or something. So um, it's important to. So I just thought that was really great that someone in our group brought that up, and I thought it was a, an amazing conversation. And but what I thought of with this question, like I can go all day long without kissing my husband. I'm gonna raise my hand to that because so can I. Right. And um, I feel like I've gotten a lot better at it. But when I say a lot better, it's like one iota better probably in your realm. No, I, I gave you some credit. Give me some credit. Go ahead. Give me more. You've done good. Thanks. Um, but so the way I figured, I mean, it sounds like I'm really good at it. I'm not. Mm -hmm. But the things that have helped me and changed the way that I interact with Seth, because touch, physical affection is not something I grew up with in my house and it's not something I do naturally. So I've done things like write it on my hand, write it on my to-do list. Put it in a timer in my phone, a, uh, an alarm. Mm -hmm. So there are ways that you can essentially train yourself to be um, to do physical touch, if that makes sense. And that was one of the responses because this is a question from the women's group, and one of the responses was, "I had to, in you know, quote, train myself right. to to use my partner's love language because I knew that it would be beneficial to our marriage." And you have to create habits, and it's really <laughs> cute, actually. Hey, Christina, good morning. It's really cute because I know that. Even though I don't hear an alarm or see a note or something, like you come up to me or whatever, just random, and you just go, mm -hmm. you know, and you kind of kiss on me or whatever. And I'm like, I know that she intentionally did that. Why can't I hear myself good? That she intentionally did that, and it's not disingenuous. I don't think it's fake or anything. It's her being attuned to what I like. And, and intentional. And intentional, and you being willing to do that. So mm -hmm. I take it as... Uh, it, it's it, I consider it to be very loving. So, yeah, and and you. I would say though too, if so, I you're you're saying that your husband says, oh, like thanks for what did it say? Thanks for pretending, pretending. like you love me. Mm -hmm. So I know that's how I that's something I would have done to Seth, like say those kinds of things, and it's mm -hmm. not super helpful. So I don't know because when I. If I did approach Seth and give him a kiss or a hug, it is because I'm being intentional and it mm -hmm. is because I care. And it is like, oh, this is not my natural state, but I'm doing this on purpose. And if he were to say, oh, thanks, you finally noticed me, I would be very less inclined to right. do it again. And I'm not like trying to call your husband out, but maybe. Well, no, I, I am. I was going to say that. Even. Call him like, out. Maybe, do it. maybe I don't know if your husband listens or not, but that is passive aggressive and it's sarcastic. It's not, but it's, it comes from a place of hurt. So, I, but I know, that's what I was fixing to say. So it's passive aggressive and it's sarcastic and you're doing that as a defense mechanism. You're like, oh, I like this, but I'm not going to show you because if I show you, you might not do it and there's some uncomfortableness around that. And so, you attract more flies with honey. So Where'd you hear that saying? Not I tell you. Seth says to me all the time forever and I used to get so mad at him. But, um, but yeah, so I, I just want to encourage the partner of said question asker to 
zip your lip when your partner gives you what you want. That's right. Uh, make them feel like, give them a reward, actually. Give your partner a reward when they do the thing you want them to do, because then they'll do it more. That's right. It's kind of like calling a dog and then hitting the dog when it comes to you. <laughs> it's not a that's joke. a great analogy and the makes me feel terrible. The same. Because I essentially feel like that's what I've done. Well, you have a ton. All right. Anyway, next question. A friend of mine is going to be married, getting married soon. Her first marriage ended traumatically and without any warning. She has a lot of fears and anxiety about getting married again, even though she says she knows that her fiancé is totally different from her ex-husband. I don't think that they will read marriage books, so I told her about this podcast. What else would you suggest to help people with communication and expectations? Um, so I would highly suggest if, I don't know if the person who wrote this question has listened to season one of our show, but I would suggest, um, what is this, the word I'm trying to say? Having, I would suggest you listen to season one mm -hmm. and then share maybe the most relevant episodes. So mm -hmm. the, communica the episodes in season one are completely different from this format. So they're like highly produced, there's music, there's interviews in every single episode, multiple interviews. So I would suggest that first. So go to season one and look up things like the communication episodes and expectation episodes. They're very, very insightful and very different from this format. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing, that I'm kind of, I say unfortunately, but it's not unfortunate. Um, you have to just kind of saturate yourself in this type of stuff. So audiobooks, videos, TED Talks. Like if mm -hmm. you think they won't read a book, then find as many resources about good communication as you can. Uh, mm -hmm. One place is like YouTube has, there's a YouTube channel called the School of Life London, and they have like these little four minute snippets or like cartoon video things, but they're really, really well done. And the guy is British, so you go, oh, he must know what he's talking about. <laughs> um, but that, the School of Life London is a good place to get little like video things about that kind okay, of stuff. Okay, so this is what I have to say. So her first marriage ended traumatically and without any warning, so naturally, she was going. She is going to have an increased anxiety and maybe even some PTSD. I don't know what the trauma was around that. So some of that anxiety is going to be natural, and that's even healthy, right? So she's moving cautiously into a new marriage. Hopefully, that anxiety won't um, uh, play a too big a part in this relationship and cause problems later. So I would suggest maybe some premarital counseling, some therapy around that, uh, some therapy also around her past traumatic events and um, hopefully she so hopefully you trust her and hopefully she trusts herself when you say she says she knows that her fiance is totally different from her okay. ex-husband I hope so uh, sometimes based on childhood experiences we look for partners and we kind of perpetuate what's happened to us in the past. I just listened, that was, was actually a lady in the Mel Robbins book mm -hmm. today, and uh, she said that her dad was abusive and alcoholic, and somehow she always ended up with men. That were like that. Like that, and it was something that was from her past, and relationships just weren't working out for her. Hopefully this isn't a similar thing, but I would like to take a deeper look into um, her family of origin, her dad, her mom, and that relationship. So, mm -hmm. all right, good question. All right, next um, question. Well, there was something else I was going to say, but... I don't like it when we just keep on talking about questions forever. Sometimes it's just like... You hate it when we answer <laughs> questions on our Q&A. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Do uh, you want me to read it? Sure, go ahead. It's your show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. My husband is a functioning alcoholic with low self-esteem. No wonder alcohol is a depressant. That was very sassy. It is sassy because I have had alcohol before. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> and like abused alcohol and thought, oh, why do I, why am I kind of depressed? Why do I have low energy? It's a freaking depressant. Anyway, it's not a stimulant. Uh, we are separated. <clears throat> we are separated because this has gone on for years. No one would think he was an alcoholic, which makes things harder. We have two kids and I'm worried now how it will impact them and things are only getting worse. I've been in counseling and Al-Anon, but my worry over my son and what we would do about college for my daughter keeps me in this place, as well as the sadness of what I had always hoped in my marriage would be and the hope I have held on to for the years he had been drinking. I am really struggling. I know we'll, we will all be fine, but this is actually making the change. But the it is actually making the change that saddens me to be frozen. Oh, okay. I'm sad that I'm running out of hope that this marriage can be saved. Mm, so fight flight or freeze you're kind of in a freeze response and a, a panic response so I'm sorry that your marriage is this way and I wasn't trying to be sassy um, I was more talking to uh, the husband in that mm -hmm. and obviously well I'm glad you've been to Al-Anon I know that uh, those 
that, that group is can be very supportive and have a lot of outside resources and it's up to you you can't you can't make anybody stop what they're doing that you see is clearly destructive harmful hurtful to the family and just not sustainable uh, you can't you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink mm -hmm. kind of thing and you'll drive yourself nuts if you take on any more of his his capital h i s mm -hmm.